SpaceX's Super Heavy booster has successfully landed in Texas, marking a milestone in the company's quest for reusability of its rockets. We have left off. Earlier, the Starship Mega Rocket took off from Texas. Only minutes later, the so-called Super Heavy booster detached, returning back to the launch pad and docking onto mechanical arms. That was a world first. Reusing boosters speeds up launch rates and saves millions of dollars in operational costs. So let's turn to former NASA employee and space journalist Keith Cowing. Uh, good to have you on the program again, Keith. Uh, how excited are you by this catching of the rocket? Well, it's a combination of excitement, nervousness, and oh my God, did they really do this sort of thing. And with the video you've shown, you really don't, it's, it's one of those cases where a space story explains itself. This giant rocket comes in and they catch it with two, they call it Mechazilla, but chopsticks. And it stops and they can reuse it. I mean, it's science fiction. That's, all, that's the only word I can use to describe it accurately. Mm. So it is a milestone, but uh, where do we go from here? Does this mean our grandchildren will be living in space? Well, maybe you and I might. Uh, it depends on your, your travel budget. But um, just because they did it once doesn't mean they keep doing it. I mean, this practice makes perfect. And that's one of the challenges here is that can you do this routinely? Because the plans that SpaceX has is for many launches per day. And as they've shown with their other Falcon 9 ro rocket, you can have an economy of scale if you can reuse these things and not throw them away every time. So that's mm. where the rub is, is how do you make a spectacular, again, this video you're showing, how do you do that three or four times a day like you would with an airliner? That's mm. the real challenge. Is there any, anyway, it, it sounds like science fiction anyway, but is there any way this will actually have a tangible impact on normal people's day-to-day -day lives? You know, you and I are probably about the same age, and so you grew up hearing that this was something that was going to happen in the future, and a lot of us were, let's say, impatient for that. Whereas you've got a whole several generations now that have grown up seeing this happen more frequently. So to them, the notion that they could get on this is probably a little bit more of a realistic one than you and I can get. And, you know, again, it has to work into the thing of, how do you accept this into the way that we do things? Before we had Federal Express, what did you do? You, you planned. But now if you have the ability to go into space routinely, that changes the way you think about things, not only yourself, but how you do things around the world and on other worlds. Mm. Now, a lot of people have been eyeing space as a lucrative market to invest in. I mean, when do you think we will reach the tipping point that the industry really takes off? Uh, we've, you know, it's it's asymmetrical to use a technical term, but th that's happened in the case of SpaceX, where they can now launch a rocket for single-digit millions of dollars. You're in essence paying for fuel and some guy to clean it off and reuse it. That's not what was the case a mere five, seven, eight, nine years ago. So now it almost gets to the point where your payload. Uh, you know, it's so cheap to launch that you, if you lose it, you just launch another. But these rockets are so reliable. Mm. So again, it just it's a paradigm shift. You change the way you look at things. And uh, we haven't really seen that in the older aerospace companies like Boeing. Like perfect example, the launch pad for America's moon rockets built by Bechtel. It's billions of dollars over budget. It won't be able to catch a flaming rocket coming back in. Yet SpaceX is building these things like we would build corn silos here in the U.S., so some companies get it, others some have yet to figure it out. Mm. Now, if you were offered a free ticket to go into one of these rockets and come back onto yes. the, on the launch pad, would you get on one of them? Well, yeah, I sure would. <laughs> and I'm sure you'd, you'd want to go with me if you could get that travel budget. But yeah, I, I would. And it's just me because I grew up in the Apollo mm. era and so forth. But again... I'd want to go for the experience of it, whereas a lot of people would want to go for, A, the experience, and, oh, can I do something important and valuable while I'm up there? That's yeah, where well, it's shifting. I would, Again, it's going to enjoy I, I would definitely, I can promise you that, I would definitely uh, join you. Uh, we have to leave it here. Uh, Keith okay. Carring, space journalist, thank That's you good. very much.